Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about some of the exciting things going on in the modern C++ world. That is the actual language evolution in C++ 23 and beyond. But what I actually wanna look at is some of the exciting announcements that have been announced at various conferences this year about other tools, other successors, possible successors to the C++ programming language. Now, what I'm not gonna do in this video is tell you which one's best, which one I like, because most of these tools are so early on in their evolution, it's impossible to have any trade-offs. What I will say though, is I like this active development and I think it's gonna benefit the C++ world overall to have these different tools and different language ideas that are coming in from the community. So with that said, let me go ahead and bring you to one of our favorite websites, CPP Reference, and let's go ahead and start there. Now, if you're not aware of just how the language evolves, C++, just like a spoken language, evolves over time, whether naturally or just more sort of features being added. So again, every three years, the compiler uh, or the standard for the actual language and the standard library gets updated, and then compiler implementers will again give us these features over time. So if I go ahead and click on C23 here, you can, for instance, see if there's been any new language features added or maybe just stuff in libraries. So, you know, usually one or the other and maybe any defect reports. And then again, you can kind of keep track of over time as your compiler actually implements these features. Now, given that this video is recorded in 2022, not all of these features are gonna be implemented uh, yet in uh, for the 2023 uh, actual language, but you can go ahead and see that this is sort of the proposals that have been made, what's gonna be accepted, and then what's gonna be supported by most of the major compilers, which are listed here. Now, this again, for the language C++ is a very healthy thing to have lots of different compilers supporting these different features and overall for the evolution of the language, in my opinion. Now, what I want to get to and what you're probably watching this video for is what's the interesting or sort of exciting news going on in the C++ world. So let me go ahead and start you off with the first uh, that I learned about earlier this year, which is Circle C++. So Circle is coming from uh, Sean Baxter, who is the, uh, to my understanding, main contributor or sole contributor, um, writing a new C++ 20 compiler that's it's been written from scratch. And basically what this, um, what Sean's doing here is adding a bunch of novel features to the C++ language that are going to be very useful for folks to use. Now you can see some of these like dynamic slices and list comprehensions, for instance, that could be very useful. So let's go ahead and click on this readme, take a peek here. And again, you can see all these different uh, features here. I'm not gonna make you uh, read through all of this, but let's go ahead and um, maybe just find one here. And probably the interesting part to look at is again, to just scroll in and see uh, maybe circle of our C++ ranges here. And let's just go ahead and see, here's how we do uh, ranges in C++ and with circle. Oh, let me go ahead and just uh, see this here. So again, you can see that this code here is much uh, less verbose. It's a lot simpler with circle in the sense that we can see right here what we're doing with the uh, range versus doing the for each here. We're just printing out everything from the start to the uh, finish, it looks like. So that's pretty cool here that, again, we have folks thinking about some of these ideas. So what I'll say with something like Circle is maybe some of these ideas that are being uh, implemented here shown how they're uh, working and could impact developers and how we write code. Maybe those ideas will get uh, sort of incorporated into the next version of C++ or the version after. And that's sort of what I wanna to get to in this video, that I think these sort of things here being uh, implemented, actually you know, showing how they're being used, and then if folks start adopting this actual compiler, will get into the language, which is overall a good thing. But this might be something for you to take a look at. So one place where you might learn a little bit more about Circle is in the 2022 uh, C++ uh, Now, uh, video here to get an idea of circle and in particular the metaprogramming features that have been added here. So that's the first of the tools that I want to talk about here. And of course you can look on Compiler Explorer, which has actually a version of circle available. So you can go ahead and try to uh, write a program here and see that it again is a compiler that outputs some assembly code. <laughs> so that's really cool with circle. Now, let's go ahead and move on to one of the other exciting announcements that happened this summer of 2022, and that is the Carbon language here. So I'm just gonna go ahead to their 
uh, GitHub page here, and you can see what Carbon is. Now, what Carbon is, is again, an experimental successor to C++. So again, I'll re-emphasize that word that this is an experiment that folks are working on to see if they can, well, generate better C++ code. And maybe to understand what this means by successor to C++, it's best if I go ahead and scroll down to this little um, analogy that they have, or actually what this tool is in their GitHub page. So for those of you who've done JavaScript, you probably know about TypeScript, this idea that TypeScript uh, is essentially a way to write code with type safety, and then a TypeScript compiler will actually compile or transpile, that is translate out to JavaScript, and then you have the rest of your JavaScript infrastructure. I think this is the same with Kotlin and Java or any of the Java uh, VM languages. That's the idea with Carbon. So we can actually get a little bit of a look at this by looking at Carbon on Compiler Explorer. And you can go ahead and see that we have some uh, code here on the left for our Carbon. And what that actually emits out here is, well, some C++ here. So again, I think this is a pretty cool um, tool that's already active in development. Now, most of these tools that I'm talking about today probably aren't ready for large scale production as these are languages in evolution. But what I think is interesting to look at, and specifically on the Carbon page here, and then the next tool that I'm gonna show you is some of the actual language goals here. Why they're designing Carbon? Why is this needed? So this, in a sense, is um, a way to continue evolving this C++ programming language, take advantage of all the infrastructure there, but again, write better uh, safe code and get the defaults right. So I think Carbon's gonna be a really interesting uh, project to take a look at. Again, it's early in development as I sort of just scroll through here. And that's the idea that this language could change or go through some uh, evolution here. But again, if you want to look at some of these samples or try them out in Compiler Explorer, I think that might be useful to see and to just see what Carbon's trying to do and again, how it's trying to get us to write uh, some better defaults here. So that's Carbon. Now, uh, I'll go ahead and link in the description the C++ North video because this is where the announcement of Carbon was officially released, which I think is a really great uh, way of identifying just why the project exists, what its goals are, what the current status is, and of course these things will update in the future depending on when you're watching this video, uh, but I think this was really uh, nicely presented there. All right, so the next uh, sort of C++ uh, exciting news I want to talk about is one from uh, Herb Sutter, who is talking about CPP Front, and this was just released at CPPCon a few days ago from the uh, release of this video that you're going to be watching. Um, so I'll link to that in the future once it's available. I suspect that might take um, a few more uh, days for it to be released, but uh, I'll at least get you um, a link in the description when that happens. Uh, but this is from uh, Herb Sutter for CPP Front, which is uh, sort of similar to Carbon in that it is a tool that's going to uh, you'll write your code in CPP Front, and then it will actually generate C++ that you can actually use. So again, the styles between CPP Front and Carbon might evolve a little bit differently. They look different now. Um, but the really cool thing about this tool is just some of the infrastructure that's being built into it um, with the different goals. And when I watched this talk, what I understood from it is, you know, we just want to be able to write C++ code in a simple way with the correct defaults. So that's really the uh, goal of this project here, to be able to write code in the correct way. When we're teaching C++, for instance, like on this series, if I could teach something like CPP front, I wouldn't have to, you know, sort of teach all these little individual edge cases. I could just write code and focus on the actual logic of the program, the sort of interesting part. And I think that's what some of these languages are getting towards um, giving us these front ends to do that. Again, I think these are good things for C++ overall. I think the language will keep evolving, but maybe the front ends or our interfaces to C++ will change to help us write uh, smarter code that's safer and just as performant because at the end of the day, it's just generating C++. Now, of course, those generators might have to go through some iterations when it comes to optimization of these things, but we'll be using the defaults uh, that are correct um, in, in the first place. So let me just go ahead and uh, kind of scroll through here with uh, CPP front. And again, emphasizing as um, the authors of the talks are that this is an experiment. Again, these pages might change and add more concrete details later, but this is an experiment and they're going to learn from it um, in each of these cases, circle, carbon, CPP front. 
uh, and sort of evolve uh, their individual uh, efforts as it goes on. Okay, so uh, I think this is interesting to uh, look through. And with that said, um, you know, this is this is kind of cool, all the different um, things that have been uh, implemented here. I mean, uh, they're even talking about, you know, some of the goals, right? Could you opt into a sort of garbage collection if you wanted that, if you wanted memory safety uh, to be your default in the language? So uh, I think that's something really cool um, in CPP front as one of their goals here. So with this one, again, you can click on uh, the CPP front here on uh, compiler explore and just check this out and again you can see that it's actually generating some c plus plus code and just giving you the things that should probably be the right defaults in most of the case things like no discard which we have to talk about in this series so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that uh, but anyways that's where i'll go ahead and stop there so circle uh, carbon cpp front i sort of think it's really exciting efforts going on in the c plus plus world now there's some other really cool and exciting things going on uh, that were also announced um, more recently. So Val is another programming language that has some efforts from uh, Dave Abrahams and Dimitri Recardon uh, for developing this language. Now this language, uh, to my understanding, is developed in uh, Swift, uh, but one of its goals is interoperability with C++. So I think this is another sort of interesting uh, language to look at here from folks who are involved uh, or have previously heavily been involved in the C++ community as well as the Swift community and thinking about just how we program and again I'm going to highlight this phrase safe by uh, default which is one of their uh, sort of goals here and let me get a, a zoom in here just so you can see that safe by default fast and simple so again another sort of uh, systems language here uh, but with interoperability with C++. Uh, so there's been some talks at CPP now, for instance, that are going to talk a little bit more about value semantics, generic programming, things that we often think about as uh, C++ programmers uh, in this case here. Um, so there will be some other CPP con talks uh, about this. So I'll try to link those in the description uh, below as well so you can learn more about it. And when I was thinking about Val and sort of uh, this interoperability with C++, as you folks know, I'm a big fan of the D programming language. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and, you know, click that that was one of their goals as well, you know, interfacing with the C++ language. Um, so maybe you want to write some code that's safe by default in D that has, you know, garbage collection, which you can enable or disable in D, uh, and then interface with your C++ code base in that ecosystem. So again, I think that's sort of, uh, again, interesting or, or similar ideas to uh, Val here. So with that said, there's a lot of stuff here. I'll go ahead and just flip through the links here. Again, talking about the evolution of C++, languages and compilers being built like Circle, different front ends being built like um, Carbon, for instance, and then even the uh, CPP front uh, tool from uh, Sutter. I think these are really, really interesting and exciting developments. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, I'm excited about this. And again, overall, one of these tools, I don't know which one's going to evolve the most or be the, the next tool to learn, but I think it's an exciting time or almost a golden age uh, in programming. Uh, I've, I've been saying this for a while to other folks that we're really in a golden age of programming languages and that we're really seeing some cool developments that are thinking about how we write software and can write software that's fast and safe now these days. You know, we don't have to just use C like we were using for the past, you know, since the 70s <laughs> to get software that uh, just runs fast and not think about the actual safety or the actual user experience of programming in that language, which I think is something that's very important. It's a reason why I myself use different languages uh, for different tasks because it's just more enjoyable sometimes to program in those languages. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this. This was mostly a rundown of just interesting or exciting things going on in the C++ world. It's not our usual tutorial style lesson, but it might be something interesting for you to sort of dig into um, and just change things up a little bit in this series. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to leave this video here. There'll be a bunch of links in the description, uh, mostly links in the description. Uh, so you can go ahead and check out some of these things if you just weren't aware that they existed. So hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you in the next video.